How do you know when a pitcher's run out of gas? Now, most of our baseball sims make it pretty easy. In most board games, you've got mechanics that tell you that the pitcher isn't effective anymore. Computer-based sims are a little bit more tricky, but usually you've got something to look at like a pitch count. In real life, of course, it's a little bit more complicated. I was reading about Game 2 of the 1985 World Series the other day. I was reading about it in the old 1986 Bill James Baseball Abstract. That's my favorite volume in the series. James's long piece on the 1985 World Series from a fan's perspective reminded me of this game. You've probably heard about it, and many of you probably watched it. The St. Louis Cardinals came back from a two-run deficit in the ninth inning to win 4-2. They were the first team in World Series history to erase a two-run deficit since the 1939 Yankees. The Yankees accomplished that in Game 4 of the 1939 World Series, which was the final game of their sweep. That was the game that, in the top of the 10th inning, had that famous play known as Lombardi's Snooze. Now, I watched the top of the ninth inning of Game 2 of the 1985 World Series, and then I watched it again, slower and with a notebook at hand. I noticed one big mistake by Dick Hauser, as well as two other little mistakes. Now, the big mistake is the obvious one. Hauser should have taken Charlie Liebrand out far sooner than he did. We can kind of forgive him for this. Charlie Liebrand was pitching a two-hitter going into the top of the ninth. By that time, he'd thrown 107 pitches. He had faced a total of 27 hitters, given up two hits and one walk. He was going through the order for the fourth time, which is a red flag for us in the sabermetric era, but was probably not such a big deal in 1985. Hauser left Liebrand in there far too long. In retrospect, you can tell that Liebrand was tiring. Charlie, a lefty, was facing a string of right-handed Cardinals hitters. He was trying to hit the outside corner, but look at how badly these pitches miss. Now, in fairness to Charlie Liebrandt, he really should never have been in this position to begin with. There was this pop-up by Willie McGee, the leadoff hitter in the inning, that should have been caught by catcher Jim Sundberg. If you watch carefully, you can see the ball hit the rear end of a player in the Royals' dugout who was standing right in front of Sundberg. Tim McCarver on the broadcast said that Steve Balboni should have made an acrobatic try to catch it. Of course, Steve wouldn't because it's clearly Sundberg's ball. Now the very next pitch was this one. That should have been called strike three, but was called a ball. And then McGee wound up hitting a double starting a rally. Now Charlie Liebrandt should have also gotten this call later on against Jack Clark. Wouldn't have made much of a difference, but that really was a strike. But still, that's no excuse for not putting Quisenberry in. Now, I know Quisenberry wasn't quite as good in 1985 as he'd been in 1983 and 1984, but you've got a closer for a reason. Now, there were two other mistakes that Hauser made, like I said, and that everybody reporting on this game at the time missed. The first one, Jack Clark's base hit to drive in McGee should have been fielded by George Brett. Brett was playing on the line, which is completely inexcusable. The Royals were up by two runs still in the top of the ninth inning with two men out. There's no reason to play the line because the double or even the triple doesn't hurt you. It was a good pitch by Liebrandt that normally would have ended the ball game. Second, Hauser should not have walked Cesar Cedeno intentionally. That loaded the bases for Terry Pendleton. Now, it wasn't an awful decision to load the bases. I know you want to get the force out at every base. But since Hauser knew he was going to let Lee Brandt pitch to Terry Pendleton anyway, he should have allowed him to pitch to Cedeno. He could have had Charlie try to pitch on the outside corner just like he did to every hitter beforehand. 
the worst thing that would have happened would have been a walk, which is what the Cardinals got anyway. Anyway, there you have it. If you ask me, Hauser should have put Quisenberry in earlier. Maybe not at the beginning of the inning, but definitely after Jack Clark's that bad, probably before it, I would say. But that wasn't the only mistake that Hauser made.